was for our industry. I, I'm not. I'm not seeing work-life balance uh, improving uh, any time now. And let me say, it's not just for the women. It's for the men too. So if you see Sashi and me as our life, or you know, different uh, uh, both men and women, I think we are working any day from 12 to 18 hours, which is really really long uh, hours. Um, I think for women it's even worse, but at least men have stayed in the workforce despite these 12 or 18 hours. They haven't dropped out. I think a lot it, of uh, women have just dropped out. And if you see the statistics uh, in uh, even media, so while media may have a certain set of women, and my belief is there are more women because 20 years back when we started work, media was not seen as the you know, hot and happening place to be in. Now, after 20 years, because of the change in dynamics, it has become hot and happening. So by default, women have been there. But if you also see the uh, statistically, the number of women who are married and have kids and have stayed in the, uh, and stayed married and stayed in the workforce are really, really few and far between. And um, while I've, I've been, you know, I'm one of the examples of, you know, being married, got kids, stayed in the workforce. I know it's not easy. And I think uh, we owe it to everybody who's of, uh, you know, who are working to try seeing how to making it difficult. So I've been now pushing, uh, you know, my organization, my teams to do a couple of things, which I'm not sure whether it's okay at the global stage, but I'm in any case trying to push. So for example, I'm trying to figure out a common time and say 11 to 4 is your common time. The rest of the time you can either take two, three hours before that, two, three hours after that, choice is yours. Uh, I'm, I'm almost making it okay to say after 7 o'clock, put on your mail saying, I've gone home and I'll be back in the office tomorrow morning. Because what happens is a lot of people correspond even at 7 and 8 and 9 in the night and they expect a reply. And that's not fair. I mean, you 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 must appreciate if you expect dedicated people at work, they should be dedicated to their families in the, uh, you know, when they go home. It's not just a, a different location and you have to start continue working. And we will just burn out our people because anyone who works 18 hours is going to be burnt out. And, uh, you know, they're going to fall... Uh, they're going to get out of the workforce much earlier than which is why you see a lot of people saying by 40 or 50 oh I'm tired I'm going to get out I don't want to do this anymore so if we want people to be in the workforce we have to make it easier and we have to learn now that to deal with technology and connectivity in a manner which is uh, okay so you know if I as a CEO make it acceptable to say to everyone and reply back to saying it's 7 o'clock and I'm at home I guess people slowly will start understanding that next 12 hours somebody is not at work. So you know I think we just owe it to ourselves, owe it to uh, the teams and owe it to our families and for you know health of people. I mean you hear so many stories of somebody falling you know getting a heart attack at the age of 20 and 30 and 40. It's really scary. So if the position that I'm in, if I'm not going to be able to drive that bit of change, I mean, you know, I'm not doing a good job and I will definitely uh, work hard to keep and push people to changing their methods. Also, I think it's important to understand that, you know, when we are talking of women in the workforce and to, you know, diversity inclusion, Diversity to me is a critical word and I'm not looking at women becoming clones of men. And you know most of the time when women are considered uh, the reaction is oh I have to work as hard as you know or I have to stay, I can't take a family call, I can't do things. So I don't see ourselves becoming clones of men. I think we have to just realize we are equal but we are different. And you have to be able to manage, for you know, for men and women and not become clones of each other. So, you know, 
you know it's acceptable to say that you know you at home you're taking calls of the office right so women who are so afraid to turn on and say oh i can't take a call of home because it will look bad i'm saying it's okay you're taking calls in the office calls at home it's okay to take once if there's some emergency in your house please don't think that i have to show that i don't have a family you know and yeah i've seen women literally afraid to take their kids call because they will he, she won't be seen as professional and i don't see why because it's okay you know you need to do there's a family there exists if the family is not happy and uh, cheerful and you're not taking care of it anyway i'm going to lose you so you know we, we need to change some part of our perspectives we are obviously going through the um, um you know new learning part of bark and at this point of time i can see you know some bit of frustration because uh, we are all not as familiar see we were very familiar with the 20 years system or 10 15 whatever number of years that time was in existence and we were all completely familiar and we knew how to do it and we could do it in our sleep the work it's a new system it will take time to stabilize and it will take time to relearn because everybody has to unlearn and you know uh, relearn the new system so it's going it's taking its time and uh, back also needs to stabilize because they've been changing things so that i think what clients need to understand is that it's not the agency doing something it's three of us broadcasters in uh, you know isa and 3 sfi all in it looking at a new system and more importantly a futuristic because with new technology new media coming in new devices coming in if we would have been with a system which was unable to cope up our next 20 years would have been a mess at some point you had to make that change fortunately unfortunately correct not correct who knows this year has been the 2015 2016 is the year of the change i think everybody needs to understand that there is some larger picture there is something that we are doing for the betterment of the industry for the uh, you know for the clients to understand a genuine roi for example the day we start getting mobile or we start getting you know uh, hotstar let's say data so different devices data what a boon right it will benefit the digital cover uh, this it will de- benefit the mobile advertisers and you will start realizing what is the play interaction between the three devices that we are talking of now that can happen like this right it it will take a gestation time you'll stabilize television you'll do go into desktop laptops you'll go into ipads you'll go into mobile and you'll go so the gestation period i don't know why everybody is you know feels as if all oh, it's uh, uh, you know uh, it's been a mess it's not it's a gestation period of any research and i'm sure in another couple of months it will it's stabilizing we can also see it stabilizing it'll stabilize you have to know that's a new norm you know this comparisons of oh, what was the old what is the new what is the old what is the new it's a new norm it, and you have to accept that new norm and t- treat it like a new norm if you start just doing comparison just because of two mathematical numbers and you start correlating the two numbers and say no there's a correlation i think everyone needs to quickly understand the new process on cricket uh, we've had several clients i mean a coca samsung amol number of clients that we're doing but i think interesting is certain uh, you know being on cricket and doing work on cricket or uh, doing is something that i think every media planner gets but i think what unusual because of my, uh, our ability to understand sports and i don't want to take the credit i think the team ability to now manage i think a classic example has been amul so amul uh, we are not necessarily looking at just the big cricket tournaments but we are looking at sports for example if you see the case study on uh, amul for the last 3 4 years we have now been calling milk you know we've had surplus milk now for a while uh, we've been making different uh, products like butter cheese gulab jam pizzas whatever yeah a, a lot of other ing- despite that we have more milk so now we've been pushing milk as the energy drink and if you see logically for a sports person 
a milk an energy drink is far more beneficial than any other liquid form i mean water of course but if it, it has to give you energy milk is the best thing and a lot of our sports grounds actually don't serve you milk you know and which is like the best thing that a kid can drink a sports person can drink a health driven stuff can I? so we've been promoting that too and it's not just in cricket so we've been doing some bit in cricket but we've been doing look for example the last olympics we were the uh, uh, you know the sponsors of our national team and we will do a lot of work in this time rio olympics too for example we work you know we will look at teams i mean even if you look at cricket we last time looked at netherlands team to say amul netherlands uh, you know as a sponsor principal sponsor not necessarily the biggest team because it will be far more effective and the end result may be at the same or we may be doing you know uh, we do a lot in soccer so if you see a lot of kids are uh, a lot of youngsters these days are actually watching soccer as much as they're watching cricket and you find that if late night where epl and all is going if you want a night cap it's best to have milk than anything else so we've been now promoting uh, you know other sports whether it's soccer whether it's olympics whether it's you know um, uh, badminton other sports then not just cricket i mean cricket also happens of course but uh, amul has been promoting the whole energy drink bit and i think uh, the passion shows because then we now all find different teams works for example bhag milka bhag you know in the whole uh, which was all about milka singh and if you remember the first glass that he ran for was for milk and he says that do 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 and runs and our whole work on including this so we've been you know sports uh, films also we've been looking at so we've been looking at sports in literally lateral way and uh, not just cricket my role as a ceo has obviously changed a bit since uh, i was the ceo to a ceo uh what we the difference is that we have uh, got to the table are the thinking process so we were thinking uh, strategic in any case i think but the science that we put together the analytics that we put together has increased many fold in the last couple of years in terms of you know the integration that we see which is happening across offline and offline has increased considerably which enables our planners to actually do a lot more integrated planning so we always were an integrated structure now we have been training the teams to do a lot more integrated you know, offline and online and uh, of course the outcome has been awards and i think awards has been great as usual agencies manage conflict and uh, tatas and mahindras both understand so it's not hidden from them i think at the very early stage uh, we had spoken to both and they both get that there are separate teams there are separate uh, uh, units which manage that and they are isolated so they sit separately they don't interact and it's not something that we've kept away from anybody so it's for everybody to see and you can see the kind of award winning ones we do for tatas and you can see the kind of successes that we've had on mahindras i i think both have at best could have been benefited by the knowledge that we have um, on the business don't think to me a high point is anything to do with uh, necessarily business or awards or wins or anything i think the high point is i've had fun i've uh, enjoyed myself uh, i like coming into the office uh, i like the people and we are friends more than anything else and uh, to me that's a big high point uh, of course the projection of india to the global world and uh, india is uh, clearly seen as one of the best operations in the um system in the fcb system in the ipg system whichever system you see i think there is uh, uh, we are clearly seen as a top 3 uh, you know organizations among all the um or, Lod- or fcb or whatever so that's a matter of pride to me that uh, we acknowledge as the best